YouTubies and Tubets and welcome back to Retro Specs. Now today I am going to show you something and how it works. As you can see I am sitting on top of my Septifly. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you how this thing works. If I jump off of here I've created a convenient cross section of the Septifly by cutting the sides out of it. Now I want to show you how this is capable of doing what it does and it spins around and the reason it does that is because it's got this central core. Now the central core uses the Brent Batch no tip uh, that is suspension uh, glitch welded into blocks that don't want to then fall over and that then enables it to stay stabilized. When you then put a gyroscope around that it will not move but everything around on the gyroscope will and that is attached to motors which are controlled from the seat and therefore if I demonstrate I can take off because I've got thrusters in there I can roll this thing forward and back but as you see the stabilization doesn't want to move so I can rock this back and forward no problem around it there you go and it stays still now the same thing happens if you look at it from this angle and I go up I can go backwards and forwards as I was before but now I can also go side to side and again it doesn't want to move except I move around it and that is because it is a stabilization block now to demonstrate how the gyro itself works if I jump off and quickly go over here I have set up a demonstration without using the stabilization block and you will see that I've created this little motor powered gyro let me just get rid of all these bits out of here uh, I've created this little motor powered gyro if I jump into this now I can move these block forward and back on the gyroscope and I can move it left and right and as you see the cube in the middle is what rotates because I'm rotating it with the motors now if you imagine that was a stabilization no tip device and a central core there it would stop that turning and everything around it to a weight limit that it can take would turn instead of it and that is what's happening with the Jet Septi flight and also with Ewe the engineer's uh, drone that he created the stunt drone which is fantastic and by the way the inspiration for the Septi flight so that is how it works now I got to thinking that if I could connect it to two sets of bearings on a gyroscope what would happen if I just connected it to one so if I just connected it to one I would end up with something like this uh, connected to only the sides and it will rotate uh, but as you see in the middle it stays still and again that's because it's a stabilization core and it will not tip over now as I said the stabilization core uses the Brent Batch no tip and I've welded those together it's not the most uh, stable of things for a stable uh, stabilization but I've welded them together and as you see if I hit this it will not fall over but I can spin it around uh, so that means that I can turn it through its axis for uh, for steering but I cannot pitch it and I cannot roll it and that is what enables that to happen so to demonstrate here is another core that over here I have set up conveniently that if I was to get now let's see a bearing a suspension and a block I should be able to place the bearing here and have a block on top and a suspension and a block and as you can see I am building a suspension glitch steering now if I then put a chair on top or driver's seat it's not going to be the neatest because I don't think it's going to fit too well there we go and I then connect that to the steering I should be able to steer this thing around as you see now if I then and I've put the chair on backwards but never never mind it's gonna work still uh, if I was to then put a thruster onto here and a thruster onto here and attach both of those to the driving seat uh, we would have a steerable and thrustable device even if I am sitting backwards so that will create a craft that doesn't want to tip over uh, it's quite stable and that is the central core that is in these these designs or these creations now obviously the square wheels wasn't the best idea in the world I created a 
nice little wheel over here, which I need to reset because over time, the heaviest parts of the stabilization will eventually tip. It isn't perfect, so it does tip over time, and that's been sat there for a little while. If I reset it, you will see it will be upright, and it will stay upright most of the time. Over time, again, it will tip, and that is due to the balance of it. So again, I can roll this thing around. Uh, I can spin it, and uh, yeah, we'll drive it around like so. Now, that worked fine for the one bearing on either side, so obviously one axis. Um, but I thought, what if I turn that on its side and I use that axis uh, sideways as opposed to upright? Could I then create something that span horizontally rather than vertically? And uh, I thought, well, what better uh, than the red shell? So this is a red Cooper shell. You may recognize it. Uh, if I jump into this thing, and there is a little button here, uh, a little bit opens at the back, you can jump up here and get into the seat. I then shut it with a sit button and start the thing spinning with the five button. Now, I'll leave the door open for a second and you'll see why. When I spin it with the five button, the whole thing spins around and I stay steady again on a central core in the middle. Thrusters are lifting me slightly off the floor and the thing will spin around on its core. But I stay still. Now the problem with this, although it does look like a Cooper shell because Cooper shells spin around like that, but driving this thing is a little bit tricky. And I'll show you what I mean because I use four buttons to, st to steer this or to drive this in different directions. I cannot actually steer because I have no capability of steering because, because it's turning around and spinning constantly. I can only move it forward, backwards, left and right based on my orientation on the core in the center. So I can, if I can see my head, so let's say I get behind myself here and zoom in, I can move it forward, backwards, left and right based on my orientation as a central point to uh, drive from. If I shut that, it becomes a little bit harder because I can't see where I am. I know obviously at the moment I'm beyond myself, so driving this, if I can aim it to the septi fly there, I can prove that I can actually steer this thing around. Uh, I can get over there quite easy if I keep the camera angle where it is. Once I start moving this camera angle around though, steering this becomes a whole lot harder because I can't see the orientation of myself, so therefore I can't judge which direction I am traveling in. So again, if I move behind myself, it's much, much easier. So, so yeah, it was just a little test. It was nothing serious. I thought I'd give it a go, see if it can be done, and yeah. You can use the core to make things spin horizontally as well as vertically. Now there is one more thing that I wanted to show you. It's the main reason for making this video. Something that I created using this central core and I'm going to go to another world in order to show you just what I've made. Hello there guys and welcome back and here we are in my world. Now the reserve milk tank that you can see in the background there has recently sprung a leak and as you can see there is gallons and gallons of that wonderfully fresh calcium rich white stuff all over the place now you may think what are you going to do with all that milk and we thought we could get the pumps out and we could get the straws out or i had a brainwave i thought you know what where there is milk there is cookies and that's right, these are two cookies. Now, I'm going to jump out here and show you, and I apologise for the lag because these two things, when standing next to each other, uh, are a little bit laggy. Uh, so, first of all, we have this thing here. This is the jam and cream sandwich. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've used the Durf colouring mod, uh, the tool that he made, in order to get this a lighter sort of baked biscuit color uh, and yeah pretty cool I think you'll agree now there is a way in this but I think the way I've parked it I'm not going to be able to because I think it's up there so let me just pick this up and drop it again and we'll place it down there whilst we're at it we're going to pick this one up quickly put it on a lift and there reduce some of the lag okay so this is the jam and cream sandwich or as I'm calling it, the mmm, that's jammy. And this will be available on the workshop. Now, if I look for the 
entrance button. It's not on that side, so it must be on the other. I've tried to hide it because I didn't want it sort of out in the middle of nowhere. So it is on here. It is just there. Then the cream opens up and I can get inside. Now, as you can see, again, let me get rid of these yet again. Um, there is enough seats in here for three people. So you'd have to drive alone. You can bring your friends with you. If you jump into this seat here and then jump out of that one and into the driver's seat, which is in the middle, let me zoom out. And there we are. Now I can then shut the cream by pressing the one key. And there you go. It shuts away and then simply roll this thing around. So let's see if I can take it off that ramp and into the milk. So out we go. Ooh. Again, using the Durf and MJM mod for the milk. It's the water mod, and then I just sprayed the water white to get that milk effect. So let's take this biscuit into the milk. Mm -mm. Dunking that biscuit in there. Mm -mm. Lovely, lovely fresh milk. Milk and cookies, can't beat it. So let's just spin this thing around then. As you can see, it drives pretty similar to the wheel that I showed you a while back. Uh, you can see through the middle there, you can see me on my uh, chair there, engine on the side and uh, on a stabilization block a bit bigger than the last one, as you can see. And uh, that's staying pretty steady inside there. So, yeah, I think that came out pretty well. Like I say, you can play with this. It's not the fastest vehicle in the world, uh, but it does work. And going back then to the landing pad over here, you can see the Retrio. Now, that was a name that was, um, well, let's say suggested to me by Gamerbyte. Uh, that is someone who was playing with me when I was building the cookie. Now, originally it had another name on it, but I think there might have been copyright issues with the name that I was using. Um, I don't think you'll agree it looks anything like a popular brand of biscuit uh, or cookie. Uh, of course not. Uh, so I didn't want to call it the original name and... Gamerbyte suggested calling it um, the Retrio. So that is what I've called it. I'm now struggling to get out of this thing. Can I, can I, can I get out? Uh, yes, I am. Let's uh, place that on a lift and delete. And let's get rid of that one. And there it goes. Gone forever. And here is the Retrio. Now this one is a little bit bigger than the last one, and that is because the original name didn't take up so much space. However, when um, Game of White suggested Retrio, it didn't fit. So we worked together to make this a bigger cookie altogether. And uh, we got both sides to look the same, and then I could fit Retrio just on there by putting the E and the T together there. I just about fitted it across. So the Retrio cookie, Nice dark chocolate biscuit with a soft creamy center. Um, as you can see, again, I have got a color that is not available naturally in Scrap Mechanic. Again, I've used the Durf tool in order to color that. So um, I will give a link to how you can do that in the description below. I'll give a link to that site and, uh, and also a link to Durf's page if you want to go check him out because he has done some cool creations and some cool mods. So yeah. This is the Retro Biscuit. Pretty much like the last one, it's going to open the same. Difference being, though, that this is a little bit bigger and therefore a little bit heavier. Now, is the switch on the same side as last time? It would appear so. I have the switch hidden again. There it is. Let's just press that. And it opens up. As you can see, this one doesn't lift much off the floor because, oh, because it is a lot heavier. So those bearings cannot stand the weight. Now, because of that, also, the block in the middle, the, the uh, stabilization block, wouldn't stay steady when I moved, and it would start to rotate within. So we decided we would put uh, thrusters in here, and they would help push this forward without having to rely just on the bearings, which were struggling a little bit. So again, let's press the one key to shut it. Now, reverse, as you will see, is pretty slow, because that is depending on only the bearings. It is straining. It doesn't want to go. However, if I go forwards, we use the thrust. So let's try, I would say try, because I want to try and angle it to one of these uh, one of these ramps over here. 
and it going in reverse is really, really dog slow. It doesn't want to go. So let's uh, see if we can force it forward a bit. Can we turn it? There we go. There we go. And I think when it's going forward, it's going to get some momentum. And hopefully we're going to get up here. And we'll take it off this ramp and into the milk. There it goes. Mm -mm. There's my retro cookie. Again, this will be available. Both of these will be available. And the red Cooper shell. All on the workshop for you to try out. So please go by, check them out and see what you think. Play with them, mess around with them. That's what they're there for. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys like them. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then why not spank the hell out of that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe for more retro specs. And until next time, enjoy your retro cookie. And see you soon. Bye for now.